Correct me if I'm wrong, but we all breathe air, right? And it'd be pretty abnormal to breathe the water, correct? But I've always wanted to breathe water. So today, I let my dreams come true. In Terraria, I turned on a mod that switches air and water. So that means if I'm in water, I'll be able to breathe normally, you know, just like air, just normal Terraria gameplay. But if I'm in the air, then things get a little sticky. I actually move way slower in the air and everything like that. So it's kind of ridiculous. Also, another challenge of this mod is there's no fishing. For some reason, it's broken. So no fishing, which makes this so much harder. You, you will see. So let's jump right into it. So I started my world and immediately see the bubbles above my head starting to slowly go down. I got to slowly make my way to the nearest water source. I head west and I find nothing. I die before I can find any water. Now, if there's no water, I might have to re restart the world like what am I supposed to do other than die now I head east hoping that there's a nearby water source in that direction obviously this movement speed makes it much harder to get to a water source you may also see that the slimes decide to float because of slimes behavior in water they rise in water this is air but it's technically water so they are just rising to the top of the world so eventually I die on the east as well and there is no water on either side so as as a last ditch effort to save this world, to save this playthrough, I decided to dig straight down hoping that there's some water in the underground nearby. I do end up dying eventually obviously, but I do see a little bit of light in the bottom right, meaning that there is some sort of cave down there and there could be water. So I go back at it and there is a house and some water. Yes, I'm Australian and I say water like water. I'm not gonna say like water for you Americans. Don't make fun of me. If I can make my way down there, then this world is saved. But I decided to kind of go above the house and dig straight down instead. After about five deaths, I finally get down to the house, dig down so that the water has a nice little pool that I can submerge myself in. Now I do need to fully submerge myself. The head needs to be in the water to gain the bubbles back. So the chest had an umbrella in it, which isn't bad, negates fall damage, and it is a weapon. So I start to dig down in a water pool. I don't die because I am in this water. I do find a cave and I accidentally let it all free and I have to quickly get my way down to wherever the water went, but it seems to have gone pretty deep. I get to zero bubbles, start losing health, but I find a nice pocket of water. I start mining some ores. Now something interesting is land mobs spawn on land, obviously, and water mobs spawn in the water, but they behave like it's air so they'll spawn in the water and then they'll just flop around as if they're beached I dig further down and I find some nice tungsten I find a gold chest and it has a lucky horseshoe in it now I do have to explain as one of the comments accused me of cheating because there was a lucky horseshoe in a gold chest this is 1.4.3 they changed it so that lucky horseshoes spawn in gold chests in the underground layer and cabin layers and instead they replaced lucky horseshoes with fledgling wings on sky islands but they reverted this in 1.4.4 obviously I'm on 1.4.3 because this is T mod loader I do have some additional mods like vein miner which I didn't realize I had on for a little bit so I was just slowly mining all the ores like an idiot I also did have alchemist NPC on for a bit but I decided that I wanted to make it an actual challenge of no fishing and no potions from fishing so eventually I did turn alchemist NPC off I venture out into the cave next to me there is no water and I am getting killed by a shelly and a giant worm but they move slower because they're technically underwater and I drowned so this life I decided to cut down some trees and that's it I died I decided to set up shop down in this underground house just a temporary little base and I made two NPC houses there is a reason for this. I do need a certain NPC for a certain strategy that I am going to use. And you'll see it in a minute. I head back down. I mine some more ores. I find another gold chest. And it has an extractinator in it. And I get cornered by a skeleton that moves abnormally fast underwater. And it steals my gold. But I did get enough iron to make a bucket. Which means I can use the infinite water glitch to make myself breathe properly. It doesn't work too well at first. But... I do get it down. I end up getting to the desert and just die. 
Then I head back down and get my money back. I get a flare gun, which actually is super helpful. I know, I, I literally just said a flare gun is super helpful, but I will be using it for the whole playthrough. This mod behaves weirdly, obviously because it switched the water and air. Some mechanics remain and some don't. I can hold torches underwater, but I can't place them underwater. I can place torches out of water in air, but I can't hold them. So it's really nice to have a flare gun because that works and glow sticks, but flare gun especially because I can just shoot it for lighting wherever I want in water or air. I find a couple life crystals and then I unintentionally blew myself up, but the merchant moved in. So I am able to buy a bug net. This is super important. You might know why, you might have an idea. I also extracted some silt and I bought some flares and I made a tungsten helmet. I just keep exploring this big cave. At one point I went back down into a water pocket because I was running out of bubbles and there was the critter that I needed, a goldfish. I made a topaz hook which will help immensely with movement in the air, but I am gonna need some sand for this strategy. So I head over down where there's a little bit of sand and I very tragically died very close to some water. Here we go, boys and gentlemen. The strategy involves me getting a bottle of water and a goldfish combined you get a fish bowl now this fish bowl you might think is insignificant but if you put it on your head you start drowning normally but since I breathe water if I have a bowl of water on my head at all times I can breathe now obviously I'm an idiot because I made a tungsten helmet and I just replaced that with a fish bowl I should have made leggings but now I can breathe in the air I just move very slowly I am sacrificing defense to be able to breathe but obviously that that is worth it. I continued to mine until I was almost at full HP. I found the skeleton merchant. I bought some strange brews and some bone arrows. I accidentally fell into some lava and you move at normal speed in lava. So I quickly sunk to the bottom of that. Eventually I have a full set of gold, although I'm not using the helmet for obvious reasons. And since I have a goldfish on my head, I am able to explore the surface. So I start exploring and quickly start spelunkering down into another cave. I then find my last life crystal. I get some crimtain ore and I found some Hermes boots. That'll be pretty important because our movement is so slow. It's basically crucial. So with the crimtain bars, I make a tendon bow. I then decided to venture to the jungle and try and get something kind of poggers. I find a living tree and I find a staff of regrowth and I find a fiberglass fishing pole. Why? Why do I find one now? I can't fish. I didn't know this at the time. I didn't know I couldn't fish, but then I find an anklet of the wind, which is more movement speed, super helpful. I find another fiberglass fishing pole. And then I find a boomstick, which is what I came here for. Beautiful, let's head home. I say home, I don't have a home. So I decide to start building some houses on the surface now that I can. Now, obviously NPCs die outside of water as well. It is switched for me and NPCs. So I do need to make a little water pocket for the NPCs. I then realized when I'm in the ice biome, it gives me the chilled effect because I'm technically underwater so whenever I'm in the ice biome I move dramatically slow I then used a gravitational potion and I found some fledgling wings which can replace my lucky horseshoe and I found a shiny red balloon as well part of the reason I used the grab potion was to avoid the snow I make my way down into the crimson and I break two crimson hearts and I get an undertaker and a crimson heart pet I keep heading west just to explore the world. I don't find much, but I do collect some coral, which will be important later on. And I find a flipper accessory in a water chest. But there's another reason I came to the beach. I set up a little arena in the beach so that I can fight the Eye of Cthulhu. That's right, I'm using the ocean as my platform. The ocean is a big pool of water that I can utilize, and it's basically like I'm in the air. So even though it's pretty dark under there, I pummel the Eye of Cthulhu with boomstick shots and I get it to second phase. Now it starts to dash at me. I don't know why I kept the goldfish helmet on. I should have switched on the gold helmet. I don't know what I was doing, honestly. Doesn't matter, because we're gamers, and I killed it on just under half health. Next on the agenda is to make a bunch of NPC houses, and then a goblin army decides to arrive. The goblin army also moves slow, because they're technically underwater. They weren't that bad. I just boomsticked them until they died brutal deaths. But a thing to mention 
mention is that projectiles that I shoot also move slow as if they're underwater. The Undertaker shoots slow projectiles. The Boomsticks projectiles are slower. So maybe I shouldn't have went ranged, but I went ranged anyway. I then finish off my Amazon Warehouse Packers section for my NPCs. I swear we run an ethical business. I did find the skeleton merchant again and I bought a red counterweight in case I want to use a yo-yo at some point. But I was down in the caves to find the goblin tinkerer who was being a little stubborn and wasn't spawning. But I did untie him. I bought his rocket boots and tinkerer's workbench and watched while he drowned to death. And Stezom the goblin tinkerer drowns to death. Rest in peace Stezom in the comments. But it's okay because Daz the goblin tinkerer comes. Oh, wait, he spawned outside of the Amazon packer houses. Daz, you can't survive down here. Daz, it's better as an Amazon worker. Trust me, you can't survive out in the real world. Daz then falls to the same fate as Stezom. Rest in peace Daz in the comments, please. So, with some water leaf and coral, I made a gills potion and with water leaf and shiver thorn, I made a flipper potion. These are my two potions that I will need and thank goodness they are not locked behind fishing. As you may be able to tell, the gills potion allows me to breathe air, which is normal, right? And the flipper potion allows me to move swiftly through liquids. So I am not slowly walking around everywhere. I then consume both the potions. I forget to put the gold helmet on, which is the whole point of the gills potion. And I summon the brain of Cthulhu and start pummeling it with a boomstick. And then I did put on the gold helmet. Now with a boomstick, this arena and my flipper potion, it shouldn't be too bad. The movement is much better than normal. And I just start picking off the creepers until it is the brain of Cthulhu left. And then I just have to hit the right one consistently. And with flipper flying colors we defeat the brain of Cthulhu. Then I head home and make some Crimtain armor and a Deathbringer pickaxe and feeling good I decide to go over to the dungeon and fight Skeletron straight away. Why not? I mean I'm kind of ready for it. I drink a Gills Regeneration, Iron Skin, Swiftness and Flippers potion and I summon the Curse of the Old Man. I don't really need an arena since I have a Flippers potion. I am able to just use the whole world as my platform. Obviously with a Flipper potion you are able able to just swim constantly so I could go to the top of the world and stay there for as long as I want. For some reason one of Skeletron's hands just disappear for half the fight and then it comes back and eventually I pick off both of his hands and then I start to target Skeletron's big fat skull and Skeletron is defeated. Also the tavern keep is just chilling on the top of the dungeon. So I head down into the dungeon. I did kind of skip Queen Bee. I kind of forgot about her I can't lie. Now the dungeon slimes are kind of easy to pick off because because slimes just rise to the top. That also happens to bats and certain enemies that just rise in water. So it kind of made those enemies easier, which I do appreciate. I hate those enemies. So I got a cobalt shield and a shadow key and a handgun and a valor yo-yo. And that's about all I need, so I head home. I then start growing some water leaf with some planter boxes. Water leaf is very important, but it needs to rain for me to collect water leaf seeds. So I'm kind of bound to that timing, but they do naturally grow in the desert. Make some necro armor. Also, if you didn't notice, I'm trying to look like Mermaid Man from Spongebob. <laughs> I don't know if I pulled off the look. So at this point, I realized, hey, I could get a mount that moves quickly in water and that would help me so much. So the first one that came to mind was the turtle that you get from Angler Fishing Quest. So I decided to go down and just start fishing, you know, get some quests done and the fishing reel sinks to the bottom of the water and doesn't bob. It doesn't fish in the air like you'd expect since it's technically water. If I start trying to fish in the air, it just flops down and no bobbing happens either. So a little oversight by the developer, but it's okay. We can make it a challenge, but it is such an upset because there are some huge amounts that you're able to get that traverse through liquids well from fishing. There is the lava shark that you get from lava fishing, and there's also Duke Fishron's mount for expert mode, which I won't be able to get because I can't fight Duke Fishron. But I headed down into the underworld. I got a Hellforge and drank an obsidian skin potion and started farming some Hellstone. I also looted the shadow chest that I came across and with the hellstone I made a phoenix blaster. I then found a dark lance in a shadow chest, another dark lance, and a flower of fire plus a life force potion which is the only way we're gonna be able to get that potion. I then found a voodoo demon 
I tried to fish in the lava and it just, it didn't work. It, it didn't work. I even used the lava bait. It didn't work. Very, very upsetting because I wanted to use the lava shark and fly around with a shark. It would have been so epic. I traversed the entire underworld and searched for a hellwing bow. That's what I wanted. It's super good against the wall of flesh. Chest after chest, I got treasure magnets and dark lances and everything but the hellwing bow. I'm pretty sure I looted every single shadow chest and I didn't get a hellwing bow out of any of them. So I'm stuck with the phoenix blaster which I'd rather not use against the wall but if I have to I will. So I came to the realization that water walking potions don't work. Unfortunately they don't work at all but I buffed up with gills and flipper potions and I summoned the wall of flesh after clearing a decent path. I don't need a platform obviously because I can just fly around but because of that as per usual I uh I dashed into a hungry and got stuck on the ash and died. This is all due to my laziness and it happens every dang time. I then summoned the wall of flesh again. This was the one time in the playthrough that I did use Alchemist NPC to buy an endurance and rage potion. I didn't need it, but I did it because I didn't really know if I was using it or not. And after this boss, I decided I wasn't going to use Alchemist NPC and turned it off. I, I kind of made the rules up as I was going, so forgive me for that. But thanks to the flipper potion, I was able to traverse my way through the underworld as the wall of flesh gained in on me, shooting the phoenix blaster straight into the wall's eye until it fell to me and ancient spirits of light and dark are released. We are now in hard mode. That wasn't too bad, guys. Wasn't too bad. It gets worse. Trust me, it, it gets worse. Now, this is where I say, like and subscribe for part two. No, we're doing the whole playthrough, boys. Whole playthrough. Real quick, turns out that 80% of you guys aren't subscribed. What are you doing? Subscribe right now. It's so easy. It's free. It's right there i am a gamer and i make youtube videos that go on youtube so you need to subscribe right now is the law no it's not that's a lie but just it's free just do it please now i don't know if i have to explain this but i will anyway to start off hard mode i went to the crimson and smashed some crimson altars Woo! very exciting let's go bet you didn't see that one coming after fighting off the many wraiths that wanted my head there are a good amount of ores in my world i was still not utilizing vein miner at this point like an idiot why not i am stupid i feel like it's cheating sometimes so i don't do it but whatever I get a palladium pickaxe you know the grind you know the ore grind i then find the skeleton merchant who's selling the gradient and yo-yo glove so i am able to use a decent yo-yo in early hard mode which will help a lot because i have crap guns right now and an early hard mode weapon will help out a lot now the yo-yo does traverse slowly through the water or the air whatever which does make it a little worse but it's okay it's fine then i make a mithril anvil and a mithril pickaxe and i make a yo-yo bag accessory to make my yo-yo poggers so that's raining so i take advantage of that as much as i can i get as much water leaf as i possibly can but it is a full moon tonight which means werewolves spawn now something i do want for later on is a moon charm some of you might know where that's going and after killing a few of them i do get it now another enemy i want right now as i am in the snow is an ice golem i want to farm them for the frost armor and for the wings so since I have a yo-yo, I have the perfect cheese weapon for the ice golem. And I cheese three of them, but I don't get a feather. So I then spend a long time searching long and wide for a fourth one. And that one does drop an ice feather. So I head up into the stratosphere and I start fighting some wyverns to get souls of flight. And I get some frozen wings, which I don't know how good they are. I don't know how good wings actually are in water or air. But yeah, they're kind of negated by the flipper potion. But they're decent when you don't have a flipper potion up. So now I go to look for some adamantite, which I can use to make some frost armor. And while I'm at it, I collect some souls of light. I went over to the jungle to find the last bit of ores I needed. I found a mimic who dropped a philosopher stone, which I can still cheese because it's 1.4.3. An angry trapper kills me and steals everything that I'm worth. And when I go back there, it is despawned. And eventually I got enough adamantite to make the frost armor. While I was in the jungle, I killed an angry trapper and I got the Uzi. Pretty good weapon to get early on. I'll take it. I don't know if I've ever got an Uzi early hard mode before. I then went down into the Crimson and farmed some Ikor and some Souls of Night. I killed a Crimson Mimic and got some Fatid 
Bag Nax. I fought the Wall of Flesh another couple of times, trying to get the Warrior Emblem, but I got Sorcerer and Summoner. While I was in the Underground Hallowed, I did find a summon for the Queen Slime, and I decided to fight her since I have so much space with the Flipper Potion to utilize. I can just kind of fly around forever. So, doing just that, I managed to kite my way around the Queen Slime and stay away from her deadly projectiles, and I am victorious. And I get the mount that I was kind of looking for. That's kind of why I fought her in the first place. I wanted to see what the Slime Mount does. I knew it wouldn't drop fast and I knew it would probably make me rise fast instead and that is exactly what it does. The King Slime Mount wouldn't have been great but the Queen Slime Mount is pretty good. So now I'm ready for the twins I think. So I craft the mechanical eye and I summon the twins. The plan is to use the Uzi and just use the flipper potion and everything that I have to kind of maneuver my way around it. Now the only potions I have obviously are flipper, gills, regeneration, swiftness and iron skin and that is kind of flat across the board. I won't get any other ones for the remainder of the game pretty much. So Spasmatism actually shoots his projectiles slower because it's we're technically underwater. And let me check my notes. Retinazer, not Retinizer. Retinaza, I said it right guys, also shoots lasers slower sometimes. Sometimes they're fast for some reason, I don't know. But I decided to kind of single out Spaz until Spaz was dead and now Retinaza is the only one remaining. Obviously the harder one for this. So having it solo makes it much easier and I defeat the twins pretty easily. Now with the souls of sight you can do pretty much nothing so I didn't make anything with them. And then on the next night I fought the destroyer. Now the Uzi and its special bullets actually pierce through enemies so I was able to kind of pierce through the destroyer but it's not amazing. There's definitely better weapons that can be used but I was determined to use the Uzi for this fight. Now this fight's pretty easy. I, I don't know. I go back and forth on whether this fight is hard or easy. It's not that hard. It's fine. It's fine. I just make sure to kind of pierce through the parts of the destroyer and kill the probes whenever they're around. I end up defeating the destroyer on full health. I then sleep until the next night comes because you guessed it, we're fighting Skeletron Prime. Now this one I just used my Ichor Bullets Uzi and pummeled it with bullets. This one is pretty textbook, just stay away, do damage, it's not that hard, it just has a lot of health so it's a long lasting fight. I ended up destroying two of his hands before actually killing Skeletron Prime but yeah, that wasn't too bad. Skeletron Prime is now defeated and I got some dev armor. The traveling merchant arrives just for him to drown to death. I then made full hallowed Armor and I was a bit low on hallow bars. I couldn't make a pick source, so I decided to fight the destroyer once more to get enough hallow bars to make a pixel. And I also made a hallowed helmet to kind of switch between the yo yo and the Uzi. I got some dev armor with the yo yo, which is pretty sick. And now, as you all know, I need to go down into the jungle and collect some chlorophy and life fruit. I then made a Chlorophyte shot bow and I started making a little arena for Plantera. And with Chlorophyte bullets and not much life fruit and buffed up, I decided to fight Plantera and challenge her. Now I have Chlorophyte bullets which do home in and I have Ichor arrows for the Chlorophyte shot bow to make her defense much lower. And first phase was a piece of cake, but as soon as Plantera got into second phase, that is when my movement speed really started started to show how bad it was. While underwater, even with a flipper potion, my movement is not great. Especially my vertical movement and my vertically down movement. When I am dropping, I drop very slowly. I accidentally forgot to unpause my recording, so we kind of skip a little bit, but I did hoik my way into the temple and I got myself a solar tablet and summoned the solar eclipse. Now this is for one specific drop that I need and I got it very quickly it is called the Neptune's Shell. Now this turns the holder into Merfolk. Basically, I'm a fish now and I don't need the goldfish helmet. I can breathe in the air and I can move freely as if I'm using a flipper potion. But, turns out, with this accessory, my movement is not much better. I thought that once I got this accessory, everything would be so much easier, everything would be fine and easy. Not really. Its movement is not that good. Towards the end of the solar eclipse, I did get the other item I was looking for, which is a moonstone. But we won't be using that for a bit. But I combined the Neptune's 
shell with the moon charm to make the moon shell, which means I am a werewolf at night and I am merfolk when I am underwater or in the air. Now, knowing that I have this movement with the moon shell, it's not looking so good. I'm not really sure how I can beat Plantera, but we can give it a try. I know that my movement is not much better than it was before, especially vertically, but I go around the jungle just collecting life fruit and then a pirate invasion comes. Now, this was just an invasion. It's not that hard. It's pretty simple. I just kill the pirates, kill the flying Dutchman, no problems here. The yo-yo made it quite easy. And then I headed back into the jungle. Now, I am almost full HP with life fruit, so I decided I'd challenge Plantera again. Now, I did set up a little minecart system to outmaneuver Plantera, hopefully. I did it in a circle so that I can run circles around Plantera as I normally do, but it didn't seem to be going too well. If Plantera attached its foot on the track, I would take lots of damage, which is exactly what happened, and I was actually going kind of too fast for Plantera, so I was getting hit by the little Edie things, and I ended up dying pretty horrifically. It's not looking great. So I ended it for the day, and now I recorded for 7 hours and 45 minutes to finish this playthrough. I opened up the arena more, I felt that the arena space was not big enough, and I ventured further into the jungle until I got full HP from life fruit. I literally looped around like the whole jungle looking for one last one and I couldn't find one. I looped back to the main cave and there was one right at the entrance. I then made a superstar shooter, which I don't think I even used, but it's a cool weapon. So I extended my minecart track and I summoned Plantera again. Now hopefully this time I am able to actually beat her. Now using the chlorophyte bullets with the Uzi and the Ikor arrows, same strategy as before. I go in circles until about second phase, which I decide that it's not really working. So I get off the minecart. Now it gets really sketchy. My vertical movement is so atrocious. When I am falling down to the bottom, it gets super scary. But whenever I'm going up, it's fine. I'm completely fine. This was such a mess. I absolutely hated this fight. It went so poorly, but at the end, I just decided to pummel it with the Chlorophyte shot bow and hope to beat it. I was using an archery potion just to make that damage output higher, and I did defeat it. Thank you goodness for that. That was the hardest boss fight so far, for sure. But something I realized is now the cyborg arrives after Plantera is defeated, and he sells dry rockets, which removes water. But you can craft that into wet rockets, which explodes into water, which I can use. So I went to the post-Plantera dungeon to get some nice little nifty things. There are three main things I want. I want a black belt, a tabby, and a rocket launcher. Quickly, I get a tabby, which is an improved dash. I killed a group of skeletons, and they dropped a key brand and a sniper rifle. Sniper rifle is very cool. I will take that for shizzle. With clarified bullets, it's kind of poggers. Eventually, I killed another Bone Lee and I got a black belt. And after a while, a skeleton commando does drop a rocket launcher. I bought some glowing mushroom seeds and I made a surface glowing mushroom biome for the truffle because I'm going to need that for some shroom my armor. Shroom my armor is one of my least favorite things to grind for because you need a lot of glowing mushrooms. Mushrooms, but after grinding a lot of glowing mushrooms in multiple glowing mushroom biomes, I did get enough to make the Shroomite armor and a helmet piece for bullet and for arrows. I then went down into the lizard temple to challenge the golem. Now, will this boss actually be difficult with this challenge? The movement was a little bad, but we don't really need that vertical drop speed to help with this fight as it's already so confined of a space anyway. And yeah, the, the golem kind of falls to me very quickly. Surprise, surprise, it is not very hard. Now, I was looking for one specific thing from the golem, so I did fight it again until I got a sunstone, which I got on the second try. And I fought it again and got a pixel. So now I am able to make a celestial stone, which I can turn into a celestial shell by combining it with the moon shell. So that is a really good accessory. It boosts a lot of stats and it also makes me merfolk, which is very important. All right, so now I want some better weapons. So I summon the frost moon in search for either a chain gun or a snow 
snowman cannon. The snowman cannon will be super helpful because the rocket launcher, as I found out, hurts me when I use the liquid rockets as they explode instantly. Snowman cannon doesn't hurt the user, so I would very much like that. And a chain gun is very high DPS. I fight a lot of the mini bosses and they just drop nothing for some reason. And then the ice queen spawns and the first one I kill drops the snowman cannon. Sometimes my luck is good, but after all that, I don't get a chain gun, but it's okay because I have a very good rocket launcher. I then summoned the frost moon again in search for a chain gun. I bought a flamingo pet off the zoologist, which doesn't minimize any of my movement. I move exactly the same speed, so it's just kind of fun to ride. And after a few Santa NK1s, I do get the chain gun. I then made another Shroomite helmet for the rockets. So one night it decides to be a blood moon right when I want to fight the Empress of Light. I decide that's not going to stop me and I fight the Empress of Light anyway. This fight is going to be very difficult with my limited movement, but I believe I can do it. Surely, I am a gamer. We know this. With the snowman cannon, I am able to just shoot homing rockets at the Empress of Light until it dies. And I use the Crowfight shot bow to inflict Ica onto it. And I do get very low at one point. Things get kind of hectic and my movement speed just can't outspeed it completely. The Master Ninja Gear comes in so much clutch. It is actually goaded. And eventually, the Empress of Light falls to me and I get a Starlight, which isn't great, but it's something. Now, the Soaring Insignia is not helpful since I am just using the Celestial Shell. It would normally be helpful. I didn't really get anything from that boss. I mean, I was hoping for a bow, but it, it's okay. So I decided I wanted to fight the Old One's army. Try and get some mixed armor of like summons and range. Try and get like the best armor I could. I didn't do too bad. I got to wave five, but it ended up overbearing me. Also rockets are very expensive. So at this point I was finding myself very poor. But it's okay. I decided to fight the Empress of Light, trying to get the bow that I want. But even though the Empress had a slither of health left, I died. Now, I didn't use the liquid rockets that much, but I did make a nice little area outside of my house for the NPCs so that they wouldn't drown to death constantly. They will still find a way. The truffle would come and die, come and die. It was insane. The next night, I fought the Empress of Light again, and I lost again. Maybe I am a one-hit wonder, a silly little goofball. It rains slime and no slimes actually appear at all because it starts raining but they just rise <laughs> so once again i fight the empress of light and i lose again i then turned on a light and shadow mod I it looks kind of nice i like the look of it let me know if you guys like the look of it so i fought the empress of light again and the mod made her glow pretty crazy and my bullets make some nice little glow and with the power of the new mod i defeated the empress of light for the final time and i got the eventide i then reforged it until i got unreal and hopefully i can beat the old ones army now this time i did beat wave five but barely i fought it again and this time i just shot my snowman cannon at them constantly and i got to wave seven this time but barely so now i'm low on money because i've spent so much money on rockets so i fight the pumpkin moon to farm some money there's nothing i really want from the pumpkin moon but i had a lot of money on me and i ended up dying and an enemy stole it and despawned so i had to fight the pumpkin moon again to farm some more money so after slaying a lot of pumpkins it is finally over and i can buy a lot more rockets i fought the old ones army again and i'm actually on wave seven i am fighting the enemies i'm fighting betsy but i wasn't quite able to actually defeat it then i fight it again lose but now i have enough defender medals to buy a flame burst staff which will obviously help because it is a tower defense i'm not able to defeat betsy and the seventh wave but i do get enough defender medals to get the red riding dress which is what i wanted and i fight the old one's army two more times to no success i fail at wave seven each time but i am able to get the red riding leggings which in conjunction with the shroomite helmet is very good as a mixed class for summons and range was it completely necessary no not really i probably could have beat this with shroomite but i don't know i was just having fun okay i was just enjoying myself then i decided to challenge the lunatic cultist now this fight is not that hard, right? Um, at first it wasn't too bad until I hit the wrong lunatic. So that spawned a dragon and a second lunatic cultist. But I was able to fend them off long enough for when the lunatic cultist spawned again. I actually hit the right one this time. And with the chain gun and my seeking bullets, I was able to keep my distance at a very low health and not die and summon 
the celestial creatures. So I went over to Vortex first so that I could get the Phantasm. I didn't die at all in this pillar. It wasn't that hard. I just kind of swam around until it was defeated. I then went over to the Stardust pillar because I do want a nice summon weapon for the final boss and for the next two pillars, which happened to be the hardest. With not much issue, I defeat the Stardust pillar after cloning a bunch of Stardust cells. I then head over to the Nebula pillar, which after killing a bunch of enemies, they do end up slaying me, but it's okay because they come back and I do get my revenge on them by destroying their mothership. Now the final one, my favorite of all, the Stardust Pillar. Now people keep saying to me in the comments, CJ, you know, you know the crawl to peed doesn't target you if you're not flying? I know, I know. I only fly for short periods of time so that the crawl to peed can't hit me so that I can dodge the charging enemies. Because one of the specific enemies when charging at you doesn't take any knockback. So it's either I just tank the hit and basically die or I fly for a little bit. But after a while and about five deaths to the solar pillar, which should say something about the solar pillar, you know, it's not balanced. It's way harder than the others. Now impending doom approaches. I make some super healing potions in preparation and I prepare for the moon lord's arrival. Now the Phantasm has insane DPS. I just need to survive with my little movement and that is kind of easier said than done. The Moon Lord defeats me pretty quickly because I am quite slow. Now you may have noticed I'm still wearing my lightning boots. This is important. The lightning boots actually give me much more movement speed as a merfolk. Without it, the movement speed is awful. I actually need it. Alright, I summon the Moon Lord again. Attempt to. I pummel the top eye and start hitting the other ones. The top eye is much lower than the others. I get very low. I head home and nurse heal quickly, clutch nurse heal, and I keep hitting the eyes that I need to. Now the top eye is destroyed. The left eye is almost destroyed and is now actually destroyed and the right eye is about half health. So I need to pummel this thing with damage quickly so that I can start hitting the core. Then a bunch of true eye of Cthulhu's spawn on me and I get a little messed up. I recall home and nurse heal quickly, but I'm almost dead again. And I can't quite hit that right hand and I end up just getting picked off by the true eye of Cthulhu. I legit got hit by nothing. I don't, I don't know what killed me. I then decided to use the last of my money because I'm not going to use my money for the rest of the run, obviously, to reforge my Phantasm for that little bit of extra damage and I do get Unreal. And finally, I summon the Moon Lord again. I start chipping at the eyes. They are quite low, but so am I. I get down to two hearts. I have to recall home and nurse heal. And then I get absolutely messed up by the death laser like an idiot and I die horribly. Let's run it back. Now you may have noticed that I am using a strategy of using the Queen Slime Mount for that vertical movement as soon as the death laser comes out from the Moon Lord. It does let me move quick enough to outspeed the laser and do a circle around him so that he can't hit me with it. So I'm just using the Phantasm, damaging the eyes as per usual. I go home to Nurse Hill and I die. One of these runs has to work. The Moon Lord arrives once again and we go at it for hopefully the final time. This run is looking better. All the eyes are pretty low. The Moon Lord death lasers and I destroy the top eye, quickly destroy the left eye, and then I get bombarded with projectiles everywhere from the Moon Lord. I teleport home and nurse heal. I was down to one heart, so it was very close. But then I quickly destroy the right hand and I start to chip at the core. I am half health, but I do have a heal up and I just keep shooting at the core, staying away from the true Eye of Cthulhu's death lasers. In true NPC fashion, the Dryer drowns herself in the air. Rest in peace, she. I keep my distance from the lasers, keep shooting the Phantasm. The Dryad is reincarnated as Tanya and we defeat the Moon Lord with swapped air and water. Holy crap, this was the most painful challenge ever. I hated it. The movement sucked. It was so bad. Please like and subscribe for my pain. It would mean so much. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more. Seriously, it mean the world to me. I appreciate you all. We're going for 50k by the end of the year. Super possible. Let's go. Boost me in the algorithm. It would mean so much. And I'll see you guys next time.